Anchored at Harbor Park CrossFit, a show dedicated to helping you find enrichment for the other 23 hours of your day outside of the gym. Here's your hosts, Jason, Dave, and Corian. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Anchored at Harbor Park. I'm Coach Jason. I'm Coach Dave. I'm Coach Corian. And today we are going to talk about the Harbor Park CrossFit Voyage. But before we get into that, we're going to start with an icebreaker. It's the that? day after the final season premiere of Game of Thrones. So the question for you each is, if you could belong to one house, Ooh. what house would it be? Um, I think it's Targaryen. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I don't mean, know the name of the houses too yeah, much. I'm, I, like, I like the show, but I'm not... Like, I always forget people's names. There's so many characters, and there's so many names of the houses, but I just like the lady, dragon lady. I forget her name. Daenerys? Danny. Daenerys, yeah. Yes. That's Corin. my future wife. Targaryen, for sure. Like, I mean, like, before this, like, game season got really big and everybody was into it, like, I read all the books and stuff, but, like, I think everybody knows, like, my passion and, like, how fiery I am and how excited I get. So, like, just, like, thinking of that, like... Just reminds me of Targaryen, like fire and blood, and just passion and very driven. So, I have always been a Stark person. Um, I don't know why. I guess just because that's like the first people you're introduced to. So, uh, I would loyalty. say it's your personality. So you're yeah. very yeah, I'm kind of fit that bill. Mm-hmm. Um, loyal. And humble and yeah, hardworking. Type. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so they resonated, and you know, in the books, it's like they're the very first people that are introduced, and you learn all about them. And so it's kind of like who you root for to start. Mm-hmm. So, start like person, it. winter is coming. Winter is, was back yesterday, but oh. it's literally Hopefully gone snowing. Now. It's supposed to be th- 60 by Thursday, so by the time this, epi- this episode airs, it's going to be back in the 60s. Yeah. I mean, other than snow on the ground, it is actually beautiful outside. Right, yeah. It's, like, I had honest. to drive with my windows down. Yeah. And the sun is very nice. The lake was beautiful this morning. Um, okay. All right, let's get into it. The Harbor Park CrossFit Voyage. What is it? The heck am I talking about? It's something that uh, we developed. Well, it's kind of like our process of what we do like from start to finish of like a new person coming into the gym. And this is something that you kind of developed, put onto a piece of paper to visualize it, I think is what, how I would describe it. So yeah, it's, it's basically like our, our guarantee, how we can guarantee results to people, um, new or current clients, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, we, we call it our three step process. If you follow it, if you kind of do what it says, don't wow. know what the heck that the, the air runner is going. Sorry if, if it's getting hard to hear. Um, the three-step process to guaranteed results. It's our method. It's our program. It's our um, concept of what we do and why we're here. Mm-hmm. And it starts, so assuming you're a brand new person, you've never been to our gym or never even heard of CrossFit before, it starts with... Um, Initial consult. With me, 90% of the time. We'll let you uh, hop on this one, talk about that, why it's important, what it it is. Maybe walk us through that consult process. I I can do that. So 90%, I would say, of the consults are with me um, currently. Stephanie does some. Sometimes you guys will help out, um, and maybe that process will change or or shift. But um, as of right now, it's with me. And it's something that I truly enjoy doing. I love getting to meet all of the new members as they come through and, like, learn their story, learn about them. And then for anybody who knows me, knows I have an elephant brain. So I generally remember all the stuff we talk about in our um, consult. So it's really cool. But the first of all, the reason that we do a consult and we sit down is because most people don't know what CrossFit is or they've only seen it briefly. And so to really understand the 
totality of what is going on in the gym, it's really good to have that consult because then we get to set expectations. And I think the biggest problem with some people, and it's everybody in their life, uh, you know, we have these expectations about things. And when something doesn't like reach that expectation, we feel like, well, that didn't work or that's not right. So it's not that you're that CrossFit is not going to work. It's just we need to make sure that the expectations that you're coming in here with are in alignment with what we do. And I think we've all kind of stood by our beliefs ever since we opened. Like, we believe in rest days and recovery, and we believe in form before load and, you know, all these other things. So these are all things that we're setting up, and I'm making sure that the client and us are on the same page for what the expectation is. So that way, when they come in here, they're not either overwhelmed, which is the majority, or underwhelmed by what we've got going on. So that's the point of a consult, is to really make sure that we have a full understanding about what goes on in the gym, what you can expect out of the gym, and how that's going to work with your goals that you're trying to achieve. And that's their opportunity to ask you questions. Mm -hmm. And I would say it's also kind of an opportunity for you to maybe get them to understand some things. I know a lot of people to, in today's world kind of expect things fast or they mm-hmm. come in and want to do like a quick fix, like, you know, summers in three weeks, I need to get in shape now type of thing. Yeah, exactly. So if I have somebody who's coming in here and they're trying to lose 50 pounds in a month and that's their expectation, it's not that that is not achievable. That's just not what we do here, and we don't promise those results. I can't promise you're going to lose 50 pounds, but I can promise you that if you come in every day and you're working out and we start changing your nutrition, you're going to head in that good direction. And those are the things, like you said, you're trying to set that expectation. If, at, if I didn't set that expectation and at the end of the month you're like, well, I haven't lost any weight, and I'll be like, well, that wasn't the point. In your eyes, you feel like you just wasted an entire month right? because you're like, well, that's what I was expecting. Um, so this way we can get on that, that same program together. Cool. So you kind of talk about what we do, who we are, you see what, what they might want. Mm-hmm. What else do you do in the consult? So when we do an initial consult, um, everybody comes in and I walk them around. I kind of show them the gym. Hopefully they have been to both of them because that's always awesome when I get to show them both gyms but um, I show them our lounge I tell them about our community I show them where they can get all their information for upcoming events and then generally typically these are in the evening so there's usually a class going on all of the coaches are hanging out so I get to introduce coaches or you know some um, of our members of our community and then I did kind of detail the class for them. I explained to them that everything we do is um, coach instructed as long as you're in uh, workout of the day and kind of break down how the hour goes, warm up, stretching, movement or skills prep, workout, and then sometimes midline and then mobility. So again, we're setting that expectation. You will be, you know, with a coach, somebody will be watching you and we will have a set workout for you every day for you to follow. And then we come and sit down in the office during that time. They get to tell me what they know about CrossFit, which I love hearing about. Um, again, people tell me all sorts of things that, you know, their friends have tried it. They've watched um, the documentaries about CrossFit on Netflix or, you know, maybe they have absolutely no idea whatsoever what it is and they were just Googling gyms in the area. So this gives me an idea on the things that intrigued them and brought them in. And then we go over, again, what it actually is versus what they might think that it is. Then after that, we once we know what we're in here for, we talk about anything that they're currently doing for their fitness, anything that's working for them or maybe not working for them. We go over any injuries that they might have that we might need to be aware of right out of the gate. And we also go over then their goals. Like now that they know what this is, now that they know what they can expect, tell me what they they want to achieve. And then we go very detailed into what their goals are, why it's important, and how they can go about it, kind of like our journey. So like what are the steps that we take to get to that goal? Then um, after the goals, we set them up with their beginner's foundations class. We do beginning measurements, photos, and all of that fun stuff to kind of see where they're starting from. They get a welcome packet that gives them a ton more information than I could possibly give them in an hour. And then they get assigned an ambassador or a mentor to kind of help them and, uh, again, answer any of their questions that they might have to get started. 
Very cool. So step one is that initial consult. Mm -hmm. And then we'll kind of just roll that in because you kind of talked about it. Um, foundations of mentorship. That's step two is kind of like the getting started or the onboarding. Um, and this kind of gets the new person on the right track to, again, guarantee their success. So first part of step two is foundations. I'm going to backtrack just a second into the initial consult and setting this up. In the initial consult, we have a couple of options for sign up. And once you sign up, then you get to get that ambassador and you get that foundations class set. Reason being is because we want you guys to make a commitment that you're going to come in here. So we do need that sign up. But um, one of the big things that we do is our trials. And I think that that's a big difference for our members. Because, again, m most people that I talk to have never done CrossFit before. And a lot of them have no idea what CrossFit is. So getting them an opportunity to test it out with no obligations, no contracts or anything like that gives them a better, I guess, platform and uh, open-mindedness mm -hmm. to try it. Um, I don't want people to sign a contract right away because I feel like sometimes they feel obligated and they might not like it and then they don't show up and then, you know, they're paying, right. you know, I'm not a Planet Fitness. I don't want to be Planet Fitness. Don't pay me for nothing. So... I really, really want people to do a trial so they get a good opportunity to understand what they're they're getting when they sign up with us. Because, you know, we've talked about it before, and, you know, as much as we say CrossFit is for everyone... Which it know, is. Some people just aren't going to like it. Yeah, and that's fine, too. Some people don't like working out in group settings. Sometimes people don't like someone watching them all the time. Sometimes people don't like the moves that we do here. There's a, a plethora of reasons why we're not a good fit, and that's okay. Cool. So I think what you're getting at is that we get into this trial, and that's kind of like the, the second step there where you're going to start with the foundations and then the mentorship. Yeah. So I guess I'll talk about the foundations piece, which is basically – everything that you need to know to start to be successful in your first class or first few classes. Um, and the reason we call it foundations is because we're going to go over the nine foundational movements that CrossFit teaches. Um, so that's not us. That's, you know, CrossFit uh, headquarters and pretty much every, every gym around, they might do their foundations a little bit differently but this is like the core of the CrossFit program. And there's three main movement groups that we go over. The first is squatting, second is hinging, and the third is pressing. Um, these are like the, bo the most basic uh, movements you're gonna do in real life. So like squatting, you're going to squat down to sit on a chair or sit on the, mm -hmm. the toilet. Hinging, you're gonna kind of bend over, hinge at the hip to pick up groceries or anything off the floor. Your kids even. Yep. Um, and then pressing, so any, anytime you're putting anything overhead. Up on a shelf yep. or... So those kind of things, we, we break down the technique. The goal of foundations is not to make you proficient in any of those movements. It's just for you to understand them. So when you go to your first class, that first week when coach says something, you know, you don't give them the deer in the headlights look. Yeah. You know, we, we want you to kind of remember, and be like, oh, yeah, I kind of remember doing that. Mm -hmm. And I think the big thing, too, is like, this is something I've been harping on lately, is foundations, whether it's exercise, whether it's nutrition, whether it's your job, like, there's always, like, those solid pieces that, like, have to be done. Everything else is a bonus from there. So when we're in classes... Those are the things that are going to get you, like you said, the better quality of life. Even pressing movements of pressing yourself off the floor after you've fallen down are essential to life. Everything else, when we come to clean and jerk, snatching, um, box jumps, that's just a, a next level. That's another step. But everything still starts with that, those bases of those things. And then we build on them. Mm -hmm. Cool. So foundations you're done with that then you start going to class Yay. built into that we have a mentorship program with our ambassadors dave do you want to kind of touch on that a little bit yeah i'll take that so 
the ambassador program was something that started, what, I think two and a half years ago, maybe three. Um, and I think it's ballooned into what it is today, and it's an amazing... Um, I would say evolved. Evolved. Yeah, evolved, yeah. And it's, it's an amazing little process right now that we have some really awesome people that are really, truly committed to the Har Harbor Park and what we believe in. So we searched high and low for those people that believed in the same things we do and that represent us very well. So they're just members who've been with us for a very long time. Um, and we feel are very, I guess, open to helping new people. And they help us plan events. But in this regard here, um, let's say, Jason, if you were to start and you signed up, um, Corian would look at, would assign you a, me a mentor or an ambassador. And then she would notify that ambassador, say, hey, Jason just signed up. Um, he's on a 21-day trial. His foundations class is this date. Um, so then that ambassador usually will reach out to them and Corian will find this out in the foundations but whether if they like to be phone conversation a text or maybe a Facebook message and then that kind of starts that conversation where the ambassador reaches out to introduce themselves so the goal there is that you automatically make a connection and a friendship right away with someone in the gym that you haven't even really started yet so then when you go in usually it's kind of cool I'd be like introducing class because I know somebody's new in class Everybody's introducing themselves, and all of a sudden I introduce a newer person, and that ambassador will speak up and say, oh, you're so-and-so. Like, okay, now I put the face to the name. Like, I'm so-and-so. I'm your ambassador. And it's kind of kind of cool. And then they all of a sudden instant, like, friendship. Um, the, the ambassador can kind of answer the questions because sometimes, you know, in the beginning, the newer person might be a little intimidated to ask a coach or doesn't want to sound dumb or ask a stupid question because we all have that problem, right? We all feel that. So the way we don't speak up, but maybe I can ask an ambassador because we've been talking and that's the, kind of the goal. They walk them through the first couple, couple weeks of their trial. Mm -hmm. And then if they form a relationship or a friendship, that's awesome. Like I saw um, um, Mad Madani, Madonna, oh, I always mess Madonna. up his name, Madonna, yeah. He was uh, with, came up here with Jody mm -hmm. um, and Sherry and I was like, oh, you came up to visit? And he's like, I'm coming with my, with my peeps. <laughs> and I was like, who's your peeps? He's like, um, Jody and uh, Sherry, they invited me up here. So it was nice because he's kind of in that trial. And he's like, I come up here with them on Tuesdays and Thursdays because this is where they're going to be at. And I like to work out with them. So it's fun. Yeah. And it gives people an opportunity, like you said, to um, kind of make connections because a lot of people are joining CrossFit because of the, the group and the community. Yeah. And I think sometimes people forget that we were all new once too. And we... We've gone through everything they went through, but sometimes people just see us as like they're the coach, they're the owners. Like they don't, they don't know what it's like to be in my shoes. So it's a little hard for them, like you said, to kind of ask us those things because they don't realize that we've all been through it. And those mentors, they get to see all the time and know that they're going through everything the same. Yeah, and sometimes you know, like we put out tons of information, tons of information to our members. You know, podcasts videos, posts, and sometimes, you know, people don't see it or hear it from us all the time, so it's good to have those mentors or the ambassadors going out there and telling people about the events and kind of reminding them about certain things that are going on around the gym, so it's more voices, I guess, to uh, tell you what's going on, you know, because maybe I didn't see it. Yep. So, yeah, that, that step two, the onboarding or the mentorship process, that, that is, it's like more learning. Mm -hmm. You know, as much as you're getting in here and you're working out with the classes and everything, it's almost like you're learning the movements, you're learning what we do, how we operate, that kind of thing. Even if like the, the progress on the scale or like on the barbell isn't happening, you're still making steps forward because you're learning this new, you know, way of life, how you are getting in the gym and you're being healthy or you're starting to learn how to lift weights that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So look at that that onboarding step as learning and not necessarily um, like where the magic's going to happen. Yeah. It, it could certainly happen. You know, we've had people in their first four to six weeks, you know, lose 20 pounds. That's not necessarily the goal right off the bat. Yeah. So that's a great point. I actually brought this up in my nutrition seminar yesterday. It doesn't matter if it's CrossFit, nutrition, or anything else. Like you said, that first phase is building your 
ground floor. It's building your foundation of your new healthy lifestyle. And the goals of each phase of your journey is going to be different. And you're absolutely right that it, um, that first phase is about building the habits, the routines, and the knowledge. So making yourself ready to then tackle any sort of fitness goals that you have, whether that's lose weight or gain muscle. Same thing with our nutrition. When we start uh, you know, tracking our food or we start... Um, changing out what we're eating for healthier options like that's not the intention is not to lose the weight it's to set ourselves up in a healthy spot to then do the things we need to lose weight so we're setting ourselves up during that trial to get in those routines and habits so that we can then get into our goals Mm -hmm. okay so that's step three then and we call this this step commitment yeah and it's basically just like a carousel of goal sessions Mm mm-hmm PT and nutrition, mm-hmm. and then community involvement. And the reason why it's a carousel is because, you know, the <laughs> if you've gone to the consult and then, you know, you've been with our ambassador for a couple of weeks, you kind of understand we're not here for the short term. We do things over the long term. And then this, this carousel, these, these three things here, they're just going to keep you progressing over time. It's going to keep you from losing focus or burning out or losing your passion. They're kind of just the way to keep you in tune with what you originally came in here for, um, set you up for success over the long term. And then should we go over each of these? So first one is goal sessions. You know, we we talk to you guys about goal sessions a lot. Um, Basically just to put some concrete targets in place for you. Yeah. That could be weight. That could be specific movements. That could be less specific, although we always want specific goals, but maybe you just want to feel good so you can run around with your children or whatever it is. Yeah, and I try to tell people and remind them, but when we get started, usually we do that initial setup with the consult. We go over our goals. I let people be a little bit more vague with their goals because they don't always know. Like we just know. talked about. Yeah. You know, we, don't, we want you to come in and then just kind of learn. Exactly. So then when we sit down at the end of your trial, that could be at three weeks or six weeks, we sit down and now that you understand what CrossFit is, you understand the, the habits and routines, you've talked to more people, you get, again, those expectations of what you can look for and attribute for being here, then we get a little bit more specific and that's when people really start dialing it in. So um, part of that consult is actually like a second goal session um, at the end of your trial. And then we really dial in what it is you're looking to achieve. Maybe you hit some of your goals. Maybe we can just define them better. Or maybe life circumstances have changed, and so your goals are changing. So we, what I say is we reflect and then uh, correct. So we're reflecting on what happened, uh, how did it go, and then how can we correct and get better. And then we say every three to four months after that, you guys should be sitting down with one of us. It could be me, Dave, or Jason, Stephanie. We all do the goal sessions. And I'm sure any coach, if you want to sit down specifically with them, would love to talk to you guys as well. Mm -hmm. And then this next one, so PT and nutrition, and potentially we could even like lump programming in there as well. Uh, This is going to be kind of based off of that goal session. Mm -hmm. Um, so you might define a certain amount of goals during that goal session, um, which might require some other things. Um, for example, if you want to lose a certain amount of weight, you might need some help with your nutrition. Mm-hmm. Or if you know, we define a goal that, or a movement goal you want to achieve, you might need some additional programming. Or you know, maybe you're injured, and, or you have a tweak, or... You know, you've identified some deficiencies, personal training. We don't do it a lot here. A lot of other gyms do it much better, but, like, personal training is actually mixed in with normal membership. Um, Just so, you know, you can have a coach working directly on you, you know, making sure all your mechanics are good. Um, I guess for us it could be something like, a Cairo appointment with, with Eddie to make sure you're moving well. Dave, yeah. you kind of live in that world. <laughs> a massage with Steph, maybe, or Hannah. But, um, yeah, this is kind of my realm. So PT, 
The reason why you said it's it's a little different here is because you know you're actually working with one of the coaches that you of your choice that generally probably sees you in class and can you know help identify some of those movements that maybe you're having issues with in class over a specific movement. Um, but the main thing that we do really well here is working with um, through the injury protocol. So if you get a little tweak. You're not, you, know, you hurt your shoulder, or we identify. So I also do injury um, consults and settings. When so somebody comes into me with an injury, or maybe they hurt themselves in class outside of the gym or whatever, it's just kind of preventing them from moving 100%. So we sit down, go through that, and then we identify like, okay, is this a mobility issue that we need to just you know give you some home stretching? Is this something that I can give you um, some rest? So we're going to modify that, or do I need to assign you because to Stephanie for some personal training sessions to teach you how to use a specific muscle group. So because that's maybe what's causing your injuries. So maybe there's a little bit of deficiencies. Maybe you, you keep firing on the biceps, which is inflaming the bicep tendon, um, when you really need to be engaging the lats in the back. So those are the things that um, I've worked well with Steph and, and also Eddie, too. He helps me with some mobility sessions, too, for clients. Because we obviously want to make sure that you're here for the long haul, and that's the goal of this. You know, you don't. It's not the end of the world if, oh man, I'm injured, my arm hurts, or I got in a car accident. Well, let's be real. I mean, injuries are going to happen. Yeah, and it, it could happen for a variety of reasons. Right. right. Um, and I was telling a client through the day is like maybe I, what I need to do is maybe refine the name injury because injury to me would sound like okay, injury is something that's going to put you out long term. Maybe you know, really bad. A bump and a bruise is maybe more appropriate to like, you know, a bicep tendonitis is not an injury. It's just, right. it's just something that, you know, is overused. So we just need to give it a little bit of rest and we can do alternatives to it. And I can teach you how to do that. So, you know, that's some of the stuff we do. And then kind of the third, the third step there uh, uh, of part three is community involvement. This is going to keep you excited and, and having fun while you're here. Um, you're going to experience new things, whether it's a social event or we're going to do a competition to push you out of your comfort zone or, you know, we're having a, a year-end party or something. Yeah, and community, I think, community, we're talking about the gym community, like getting involved with people. Um, we do several different social events whether that's just getting together at the gym, like you said, doing a competition or doing like fundraisers. And we try to encourage as many members to do all those things. You know, like we have the yearly Thanksgiving parties. Um, that was fun last year where everybody gets together and brings a dish for Thanksgiving, Christmas party, the white elephant gift, and j just different things like that, making sure you get involved there. Because obviously, um, it's not necessarily a cult, but people <laughs> call it a cult. Well, at the end of the day, it's cult ish. Like, I'll be honest, there's days I just don't want to come to the gym and work out. Like, it's a long day. You know, you're mentally fatigued, or maybe you're stressed out. You know, something happened at work that was really hard for you or whatever. It's a lot easier to come when I know I'm going to have some buddies and we're going to have some good laughs at the gym. You right. Know? It's kind of like motivation. Right. Or, you know, if they're going to call you out for missing, you know, it's, it's going to push you to get in here. Right. Yeah. So like, like you said, just getting involved in that community aspect of becoming a part of something, you know, making this your third place, you know, outside of play, a home and work. There's so much people's. more that goes into the community. Like how many of our members have found their significant other through our community or people who um, form these groups like our run club, the book club, the... Um, I don't know what they call themselves, but when uh, Sarah and them that talk about like true crimes and everything like that, like you're, it's more than just fitness that you're finding in this gym. You're finding other people that also have other hobbies and interests that you do, and that's fun. And then you realize like you meet people that you never thought you would ever have in your life. Like that's the best thing about CrossFit. I, I mean, take out the fitness aspect of it. Like that's my favorite part. Right. You have people of different common goals that. Mm -hmm. If you mixed them in a room, probably would never talk to each other or otherwise mm -hmm. f form those friendships. But now you have something that we all are doing commonly, right? We're all trying to get fit. We're all trying to do the 